Hello and happy Easter. I hope that you guys have had a great day celebrating with your families and that you have been able to find joy in the resurrection of Jesus today. I'll be honest, this week hasn't been totally filled with joy for me. I have been missing you guys like crazy and I missed being able to worship with you guys together this morning. But even though I have some frustration and some uh, sadness in not being able to be with you guys, I know that I can have joy in the midst of that. And so today's reading, we're going to be talking about that a little bit. It's the resurrection story, and it's a verse that I hadn't really realized was there before. Um, but I think it's a really important thing for us to remember, especially during this time. And so um, hopefully you guys already read the resurrection story this morning, either with your families or by yourselves. But if you haven't, or even if you had, here it is again. Um, we're going to be reading from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. We're going to be focusing on verse 8, so I'm just going to read that one to you one more time. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Afraid, yet filled with joy. How can those two things coexist? How can we have fear and still have joy? And the same question goes for, for us right now. How can we have sadness and still be filled with joy? How can we have frustration and still be filled with joy? We can have those things because we have hope in Jesus. And so we're going to read Psalm 100. And it talks about joy and how we can find joy um, and where, where that joy comes from. So this is a psalm for giving grateful praise, Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. I love that last verse. His faithfulness continues through all generations. The generations that it's talking about are not just the Old Testament and the New Testament. That is talking about us today. God's faithfulness continues through all generations. And so even in this time that we're living in right now, God's faithfulness continues. And so we're just going to go through this psalm um, and talk about how we can have joy. How does joy and fear coexist? How does sadness and fear coexist? Or, um, or sorry, not sadness and fear, sadness and joy. Um, how do those things coexist? How do negative emotions um, still coexist with joy? Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. This is telling us to have joy, but these parts don't exactly tell us how to have that joy yet. And so we go into the next verse where it does. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. If we know that the Lord is God, we know that he has control. We know that he has control of this world, of our lives, and we know that we can trust him. It is he who made us and we are his. We can have joy in him because we know that he gives us a purpose for this life. We are his workmanship and he has created us to do good things that he has planned for us. That's Ephesians um, 2 verse 10. It's one of my favorite verses in the Bible because it's such a great promise that we are God's workmanship created to do good works that he planned for us long ago. 
And so God has a purpose for you. And so you can find joy in that purpose. And maybe you haven't found what your purpose is yet. Maybe you're struggling with that right now. I just want to encourage you that even if you don't know what um, your big purpose is, like what you're going to go to college for or um, what you're going to do with the rest of your life, you don't have to know that. God's purpose is daily for you. And his purpose is for you to spread his love and his joy and his hope to all people. And so even though you, if you don't know um, the big things that God has planned for you, you can know those little things that every single day God is giving you a purpose to show people his love and his joy and his hope. The next verse or the next part says, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. The Bible says that we like sheep have gone astray. We have walked away from Jesus. I have walked away from Jesus because it's hard to always follow him. My heart wants to follow my own ways sometimes and I want to do what I want instead of what he wants. And so all of us have walked away from Jesus at some point, um, whether that's like for just a little time or maybe you've been walking away from Jesus for a while. I want to give you hope that you can come back to Jesus. And if you've never gone to Jesus, Jesus will accept you right where you are. We, like sheep, have gone astray. We can be lost. Um, we can be fearful. We can be frustrated. Um, we can not know where we're going. But because um, we are the sheep of his pasture, he is our shepherd. He is our guide that is going to take us out of these fearful places. He's going to take us out um, of our frustration. And he is going to give us joy because he is the one that is the giver of joy. He is the one that can make us filled with joy to overflowing. And I don't mean um, being fake happy. I don't mean like toxic positivity. I saw a post on that the other day and I was like, oh, that kind of makes sense. Like faking it. <laughs> I don't mean that kind of joy. I mean that you can still be frustrated, but know that God is there and that God is in control and that he is going to give you joy um, because you can have both of those things at the same time because you know that you have hope in Jesus. And so it's okay to be a little bit sad, but we come back to that joy that he is giving us because he's guiding us because he is our shepherd. And so this next part um, of the psalm gives us ways to some more ways to do that. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. When you are feeling frustrated, when you're feeling sad, um, when you're feeling fearful, something that you can do to feel joy is to find things that you are thankful for. Say things that you are grateful for. And so even um, as we celebrate Easter today, and I know that it's been kind of a hard Easter to not be able to be with your extended family maybe, or um, maybe you're just frustrated um, at the weeks that you haven't been able to see your friends. I encourage you tonight to write down um, three things that you're thankful for or maybe get together with your family and say um, each say something that you're thankful for. And I know that it's not Thanksgiving um, and that's something that we would normally do on Thanksgiving, but what a better day to do this than um, the day that Jesus rose from the dead for us. And so um, I just encourage you to give thanks today. Find things that you are grateful for even um, amidst this hard time that we're going through find things to be grateful for. Um, whether it's little or big, um, we all have things that we can be grateful for. And so um, we end again with the verse, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. That means right now, his love endures forever. He is a good God. And even though um, people might be questioning that, maybe people are questioning um, why you have joy, why you have hope, um, why you can be positive during all of this, it's because the Lord is good and his love endures forever. It's not anything that we do. It's not this fake happiness, um, a smile that we put on our face um, to make it look like we're happy all the time. That's not what I'm talking about. It's God's goodness, his love that endures forever. And that is the reason we can have eternal joy. If you have never given your life to Jesus, I encourage you to do that right now because amidst all of this fear and all this um, unknown that we're going through, the uncertainty, we can have hope and we can have joy 
when we have a relationship with Jesus. And maybe your relationship with Jesus hasn't been great. Maybe you asked him into your heart um, a little while ago and it just hasn't been great lately. Um, it's okay. Jesus meets us where we are and he wants us to come to him no matter what is going on in our lives. And so um, we're going to pray a prayer tonight and I just hope that if you've never prayed it before, um, that you will invite Jesus into your life um, to be Lord of your life, to be your shepherd, um, to be the one that died for you. Because even if you haven't accepted it, Jesus did die for you and he conquered death for you because he loves you and he wants you to be with him for eternity. And so um, I'm just going to say a prayer. And if you have never said that prayer before, you've never asked Jesus into your heart, I just, um, I hope that you'll do that today. And um, if you have asked Jesus into your heart, but maybe you're like me and you have gone astray sometimes and uh, you have walked away, uh, maybe just tell Jesus that you want to come back to him because he is going to accept you back with open arms. He wants you to run back to him so that he can give you joy and hope. Stop trying to find joy and hope in what the world offers. It can only be found in Jesus because he is the one that gives true everlasting hope and joy. Let's pray together. God, I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die for us on the cross Jesus, we recognize that sacrifice that you made. We know from um, reading the account before your death that you did not want to, to die because you're human. What human wants to die, wants to go through that, that suffering. But Jesus, we also know that you are God. And because you are God, you did want to make that sacrifice for us. Because you love us so much. You love us more than we could ever understand. And so Jesus... We know tonight that you made that sacrifice for each one of us and we accept the free gift of salvation that you give us through that sacrifice. Jesus, we just thank you for everything that you've done for us. We know that you conquered death by raising from the dead. We know that you are God and we know that you are the one that gives us everlasting life. And so Jesus, we give our lives to you tonight. Um, if anybody hasn't ever done that before, I just ask that um, you would tell Jesus that you give your life to him, that you give your heart to him, that you want to give him control. And Jesus, we know that we sin. We know that we um, will always, always struggle with that. Um, but we know that you are the one who forgives us. You are the one who is in control um, that helps us to come out of those things. We know that you are the one that loves us despite our mistakes. And so Jesus, um, we know that we are sinners and we ask you for forgiveness because you are the only one that can forgive us of our sins and give us that eternal life. And so today we just give our lives over to you knowing that we will still make mistakes, but knowing that you are there for us every step of the way, guiding us as our shepherd, um, having your love endure forever. So we just give our lives to you today, um, whether we have done that before or whether it's our first time, God, we give ourselves over to you. We love you and we praise you, God, and we just thank you so much again for the sacrifice, Jesus, that you made for us and um, just being able to conquer death for us, knowing that we can spend eternity with you. Amen.